another week of Huddle Up here on Northwest Access TV, Channel 15, and for those watching on Facebook. Small crew today, Paul, Dustin across the table from me. We said, let's get ready to argue and debate and get ready for the day because we're in week 13 of the NFL season. Plenty to talk about. And then there's also teams I could care less about because they're practically out of the mix anyway. I mean, you got the 49ers and the Bears this weekend. Is anybody really watching that game? I think that the 49ers <laughs> are watching that game. And I will transition to my show starter right now, Jimmy Garoppolo, going into the game late last with practically no time left. Throws the ball for a completion, runs it for another for a first down, and then throws a touchdown pass to end the game. Are you kidding me? Like two for this, two. If you're not the 49, if you're not a 49ers fan excited right now, then you're not a 49ers fan. This is this is your guy. This is this is what you guys gave up practically nothing for to get, and you got a glimpse into the greatness that is Jimmy Garoppolo. Well, and he's starting this week, so I'm really excited to see how he and does. And a great team for him to start against too, because I had said before. If he were to come off the bye and face Seattle, I think he would have got wrecked in a sense where it wouldn't have been what you really wanted to see out of Jimmy Garoppolo. Now you're playing the Bears. The Bears is your Who first are starting awful. game. The Bears right. are terrible. He's um, gonna, he's, these, this team, the Bears, are going to make Jimmy Garoppolo look like a, a godsend for the 49ers. <laughs> Seriously. Well, look what they've had the last few years. So it's, it's one of those things where, okay, we finally have our guy. Well, that's interesting because the 49ers have been quietly – you know, there's tanking like the Browns are tanking, and then there's the tank rebuild. But are they really the, tank? That's the thing. Like, are they re they, they're starting Jimmy Garoppolo, which they have really no choice with, with well, Beathard being hurt. The 49ers have done something really interesting. Do you really want Jimmy Garoppolo to start when you, you have a chance for that number two or number three pick in the draft? I think they got the number two pick locked, uh, number uh, three pick locked well, up because the Giants the, are bad. The Giants are doing their um, thing. But the 49ers, you know, they kind of fleeced the Bears for the Trubisky deal at the beginning of the year this year, and John Lynch is making some good moves. They're really disassembling that roster and reassembling quickly. They got their guy in Shanahan. Um, I'm going to be interested to see how the 49ers do on this, on, for the rest of the season because I think this team's got a lot of potential. Um, you look at that division, and the Cardinals' window is closing. The Seahawks are going to be good, but they're, you know... They're that second team. They're going to be pigeonholed in that two hole, and the Rams are going to be great. So yeah, it's gonna, that's that's going to be a very tough division for San Francisco to kind of get it. Because I think the Arizona Cardinals, like you said, I think they're one quarterback away from being that better team again. So you're going to have is is, is something like uh, the NFC West, which was a team that people made fun of for years. Is it finally going to be that top tier well, division? Well, we'll, you, we can get into that in a little bit when we're talking NFL picks. But I feel like that's. I, I'm just saying, when it came to Jimmy G, I know that my we were watching Red Zone with my family this Thanksgiving so on Sunday. We're gathered around the TV, and we're watching uh, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo in the Red Zone, and we're so excited for him. And I just think that if you're a 49ers fan, you should absolutely be pumped for this guy um, because there's really there's no downside yet. There's only upside. So you might as well just sit back, enjoy it, and just – Bask in his. In his I, I think it's great. I think I'm, it's. I think it's exciting. Um, All right, let's jump over to your. My show, show starter is going to be the good old mess in Rocky Top. Um, for those who don't know, it's college football coaching carousel season, and the Tennessee Volunteers have uh, messed up like nobody's seen recently in college football. They, oh, they messed up. Well, they did. So they fired Butch Jones um, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Tennessee just completed their worst season in SEC football ever. Didn't even win an SEC conference game. They went four and eight, one of their worst seasons as a program. And news comes out, I believe it was Saturday, it was either Saturday was or Friday, Sunday. Yeah, Saturday, Sunday. That they were going to hire Ohio State defensive coordinator Greg Schiano. Um, this made Tennessee fans really mad because there is some allegate not allegations, but you know, Schiano is loosely involved with the Penn State stuff mm -hmm. um, back in the Sandusky day. But also, a lot of people just don't like Shiano. So the fans revolted to the point where Tennessee backs out of a deal. Midway, where, like that midnight. It's like that midnight move type of thing right like before the rents do. It's 10 o'clock, and they backed out. And um, now they can't find anybody to take the job. They've interviewed Mike Gundy. They've interviewed Purdue's head coach. They are at the point where they are going anywhere and saying, please, please, sir, coach our football team. Um... And it's getting pretty ugly in Tennessee right now because nobody is going to take the job because the program, not only is the program a mess, the fans are delusional, and you have to play in the SEC, and there are a lot of coaches that are just like, eh, I'm good. And there's a lot of open seats in college football right now too. So 
it's going to be interesting to see who Tennessee can get, but they have totally bungled this hiring process. And what gets me is that if you're thinking of hiring a guy, wouldn't you just leak it to the media before you sign anything and right. just see what the reaction is? Like, for me, it almost felt like the A.J. McCarron deal for uh, Cleveland and Cincinnati where it's like we're down to like that final second and then, oh, something went wrong and we're not ready to pull the trigger on this type of thing. And it's like That's how I still feel. I feel like Cincinnati at one point was like, you know what, we're not going to make this trade. We're just going to not send in the paper type of thing. And I just look at you know the Tennessee thing and it's like, there was no, no other names have been leaked. They wanted John Gruden, you know, the groomers. They were like, yeah, we get, we want John Gruden. But if you John th- Gruden's not going anywhere. But if you think you're going to hire somebody, you know, and you're to the point where you're signing a letter of intent to hire them, wouldn't you think on Friday night you would get, you, the athletic director would call two or three of the journalists around and be like, leak this name out. Mm-hmm. And just see what the reaction is before actually signing a letter of intent to hire right. and getting all this backlash. It's amazing to me how incompetent Tennessee has been in this whole process, which really is um, (laughs) par for the course. Right, and well, I think it's just football in general right now. It's just been such a wacky season of things going wrong, and it didn't get any better this last this 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 week as well with the New York Giants. Um, One thing we wanted to chat about: Eli Manning now out as the starter for the Giants, and and a quick little timeline is they went to him. And they said, well, you can still start to keep your streak going, but we're probably going to take you out about halftime and get these other guys some reps. Giants fans, I have a ton of Giants fans. I used to live in New York. I have a ton from college. They are livid with the Giants organization right now, with the coach, with the owner, that this is their guy. This is Eli, this is Eli Manning. This is a guy that's been here for 210 consecutive games. And you're tra- saying that, oh, it's okay, you can still continue to speak, but we're not, we're not going to be our quarterback anymore. I can't believe what the Giants are doing at this point because I understand that you're 1-8, and eight, and I understand that you want to look towards two the and future. 2-9. and 2-9? and nine? They're 2-9? and nine? Okay, 2-9, and nine, whatever they are, but... I'll look that up. 2-9. Um, your quarterback of the future is not on your roster. I, it's, not, it's not worth taking a guy who's won your city two Super Bowls and saying... Well, I mean, you can play the first half, but then we got to put Geno Smith in. It's not, this is not a case where, like, if the Chiefs were doing bad, you know, you have a quarterback you drafted in the first mm-hmm. round waiting behind. Or, you know, the Broncos case where Paxton Lynch was a first round quarterback. The guy that they have, I don't even know his name, but I know he was like. His last name's Webb. He was like a, what, fifth or sixth round pick or something right. like that? So you're saying to me that you were going to bench your future Hall of Fame quarterback. And Eli gets into the Hall of Fame because he's got two Super Bowls. Um, I think it's more the fact that who he did it against. Yeah, he he brought down he he, he brought down the eighteen and zero at the time. At, he he, he was the only person to beat the Patriots at the height of the Patriot dynasty. Sure. Like, um, but and you say to him that we're going to bench you for Geno Smith, like. We saw Geno in New York. We know we know he's not going to be a quarterback of the future. Um, you know your quarterback of the future is not on this roster. It's a scapegoat move. And Ben McAdoo, you want to talk about incompetency as a coach. Well, oh remember, my. it's not just the coach's decision here. It was an organization decision. It was, a, it was the, the mayor, the, the owner was all in on this as well. So it's not, it's, yes, it could have been his idea or he's with it, but this isn't just one person's decision. Here. Well, whoever made the de- whoever's made the decision th- need to be fired. Like, I don't know why Mara would, if I'm an owner and I, you know, as an Mara owner. Mara wasn't even around. He was at the coach. He was getting ready for the coaches meetings this, this month. This, um, it, it's, this uh, owners meetings. Um, not coaches meetings. Owners, owners meetings, sorry. But, like, if I am in this organization, I look in the mirror and I say, let's just ride it out for our, our, our Hall of Fame quarterback. You know, give him kind of a Send off because you know he's not going to be on the roster I'm next year. I'm the opposite year. here. I, I really am. You don't. If you know he's not going to be on your roster, you're two and nine, and it, it, it's like kind of twofold for me. One, you are looking towards the future. You need to get some. You, you need a draft pick, and you're going to have a pretty high one this this coming year. The other part is too. If Eli Manning's not your guy, you, right now you only have two quarterbacks on the roster. They need to get some experience here because we know Geno Smith's been out of the practically out of the league for the last year, and the web guy he hasn't even, he's never played an NFL game. So these guys need to get that NFL experience. If you're going to give them at least five games here, I think that makes all the sense in the world. Now, yeah, it's a pity that you're not putting, uh, 
you know, Eli Manning, who's done so much for you, but it's almost like you've already kind of moved on from him. I've heard this from people throughout the whole year that Eli Manning isn't going to be on the Giants roster next year. So if you're 2-9, and nine, why bother? Why not just take, take, out, take out the quarterback? He's going to go somewhere. Here's what I think the Giants should do. They should trade him. Don't let him walk this year because that's what's going to happen is he's going to leave. You're not going to get anything for him. But right now you could trade him somewhere and get at least something for him. I think what and the I Giants, thought this was going to be this at the beginning of the year well, when, they what, were going, when they were doing so bad. I think what the Giants should do this offseason is go to the Broncos around draft time because I think the Giants will be in the position to get Josh Rosen. Um, I like Rosen. He's out of UCLA. Mm-hmm. Very good. You know, he, he reminds me of Deshaun Watson and Cam Newton in the sense You're practically like, going to have your pick of people because you right. have the 49ers at 2-9 and nine as well. Or 1-9. Well, the 49ers the are 49ers going to be at 1-10. Uh, at at they the may one win another game or so this year, but like they're going to be around that as they well. They have their quarterback. Right. Now, the team that doesn't have their quarterback is the Browns. Is the Browns, and so they'll pick a flyer and another quarterback. And there's two quarterbacks. There's going to be two quarterbacks. You know, Darnold will be coming out. Rosen will be coming out. Who is um, also rumored to not enter in for his is he, is he a junior going into his senior year. Yeah. Uh, he um, might not go into the draft, depending on where the Browns lie here for their quarterback. Uh, for the quarterback needs during the draft. So um, that, that's what I was reading, that he was kind of denying those, those reports at the time. And, you know, you see some of the quarterbacks, you know, Josh Rosen, I, li- I really like Rosen of UCLA. Like I was said, you know, he's somebody that reminds me of Cam Newton to Sean Watson where he doesn't look the best sometimes, but he just makes the throws that are just like, oh, wow. And then Baker Mayfield of OU is coming out. So this mm-hmm. is going to be a... It's going to be a... It's a very good quarterback class going into And the draft Lamar sure. Jackson might come out as well, right. Louisville, which will be a lot of fun. Um, but, no, there are some good quarterbacks that are going to be coming out. So, you know, I don't... I find the Giants... I know, I know you want to see what this third-string quarterback can do. Um, and I think if you start him next week, great. Get him the reps in first team. The problem with the Giants is that there's just so many issues you need to tackle... On quarterback the team. isn't your main concern quarterback. Right I now. mean, quarterback, yes, is a main concern, I think, on any team, but like your offensive line, you guys, if you flopped on flowers, simple as that. Like, that's he, he's a turnstile. Like, so I mean, it's one of those things where you need to you need to find a replacement for him as well. And if you're going to be that high in the draft, you're going to find a top tier lineman find to be able to do that. Running back, too. You got to find the Giants. Like I mean, no, there's so many things that like, need to go wrong. So, and and that's where I kind of play on the whole like, all right, you know, your team's already bad enough. Why not just let Eli go through? But then I see the whole, listen, your quarterback of the future probably is on your roster right now. Unfortunately, for your short-term future, it's going to be Webb or it's going to be Geno. And that's where you really have to... I mean, if it's Geno, you know what Geno can do, though. Right, but I think of... I, what, what I keep hearing is that the intention is to start Geno for a couple, uh, for, for to start him to begin with, but then go to Webb. So if they feel Webb is the quarterback of the future, Eli's, I mean, people forget Eli's, what, 14? 37. Yeah, he's 37. He's been in the league 14 years. So these, it's, he's, it's not, he's not a rookie here. He's not a Carson Wentz that's only got a few years here. Like, get, he's won a couple Super Bowls, but he hasn't won one. And he, he, they haven't been to the Super Bowl in five years. And, look, I think Eli, I don't know. I, I've, I say you let him play out because he's having an okay year. And then you could be like, all right, we're offering Eli Manning. You, know, you go to the Broncos and say, hey, Eli Manning for a fourth round pick. A third round pick, a good, a good pick. You know, there are some teams here. You know, the Arizona Cardinals. We don't know if Palmer will be coming back. You know, you go to the Cardinals, and be like, we can give you the, Eli and the Manning. Problem, and the problem with that is, you're only getting him for four games, five games, and is no guarantee he's going to stick with you. So it's going to all kind of be um, dependent on if he takes an extension or takes it gets a long term deal set. And I don't see him doing that with a team. I see him taking on a two year deal with a team. Now, that's the question, though. Where does he end up? I know, like, it, it, so many people are saying the obvious answer is the Jaguars. He can, um, he can get back together with Coughlin. He's got a team, that, a defense that is, is stellar right now. He's got some offensive weapons. He's got a, a running back. He can finally hand the ball off. It's not all on his shoulders. Well, just looking, at, just looking here, you know, you can have but the Jaguars, the Cardinals, the um, Broncos. See, that's, Cardinals was one of the teams that I thought of because, okay, you had this, this – um, this veteran quarterback in Carson, Carson Palmer, now you're getting Eli Manning, and you still have uh, Fitzgerald for another year. That defense isn't terrible. Um, defense is decent. I think the Cardinals are – the Cardinals are still just a little – And then part of me thought that the Dallas Cowboys would make an offer because of the whole – Jerry Jones is one of those – you know, outlandish people that kind of just goes out there and go, reaches. And we know how much he loves veteran, veteran – 
players. So like, so could you pay Dak someone has like? Been awful this year. That's no, another no, thing right now. No, Are we starting to finally? That sophomore slump is hitting Dak like no, like no uh, one else in the league right now. And I know they put up ridiculous numbers last year, uh, so anything's going to seem normal. But this year has just been terrible. It's not really. You can't even get Des Bryant the ball. It's not. He's really one of the best. He should be thing. one of the best wide receivers it, in the game. If you watch, you know, if you watch all twenty-two, or if you take a look at the Cowboys tape, Dak is just making. Bad reads. Like, it has and nothing. I'm, and honestly, you, I'm sick. I'm honestly tired of the whole, let's blame. Well, Zeke's not on the team. It doesn't matter you know where what? Zeke is. If t- if Dak Prescott is looking at triple coverage the way and tries that to they force about the Zeke. ball the in The way there. they talked about Zeke last year is that, that off, with that offensive line, anyone could be a running back. So this year, you don't have Zeke. And anyone Al- should still be able to be a running back. And Alfred Morris is doing He's not okay. a slouch. Like, he's not. I, I, I'm astonished at the amount of disrespect Alfred Morris gets. You know, he's still putting up 80, 90 yards a game. It's not like the Cowboys running. It's not like the Cowboys have nobody. It's right. not like they're handing the ball to, you know, old man back there. Morris is doing okay. Dak's reads are just awful at this point. And he's making bad reads. He's throwing bad so you picks. Throw, say you throw, and I know Eli Manning can definitely get a starting job in the NFL. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But if... if the Dallas Cowboys would take a flyer and sign a veteran quarterback like him, bring him in, teach Dak a little more, you know, type of thing. And if Dak doesn't improve, then Eli Manning becomes the face of the Cowboys in a in a for a team that is very that, that can be very competitive. They're just not. But can you imagine someone like Eli Manning playing for someone like the Cowboys? I would love that combination. Well, this is the thing that you know you look at with the Cowboys and. In hindsight, is twenty twenty. They messed up the Tony Romo situation in hindsight yeah, because clearly. they. They rode the hot hand. You know, Dak Prescott was a fourth, fifth round quarterback. Well, we weren't really saying this at the beginning of the year because of, you know, there was so much promise with with Prescott. But I think we all kind of looked at saying, like, they still need, like, a veteran quarterback on staff, and they don't have that. And what Tony Romo did was even being as a backup, he would give Dak, you know, he would be like, all right, so you see what he's doing on CBS now. You would be doing that on the sidelines of Dak. He'd be Killing sitting there it. with the tablet. And being like, okay, so he's got the Pats-Bills game this week. You got I'm this, excited. You got this Pump. linebacker cheating up here. You got this linebacker dropping in the zone. You need to throw. You need to call this audible at the line. They don't have that in Dallas right now. Um, and it's, you can see how hard Dak Prescott has regressed. I haven't seen a quarterback regress this hard in their sophomore year in a while. You know, unless if they turned out to be a bad quarterback. But, like... That's what scares me about Dak Prescott. Well, right the problem now. is also they don't have anyone to really turn to. Dak Prescott, it's either Dak Prescott or nothing right now. And I, I'm sorry, I apologize for not knowing who their backup is, but it can't be someone of of great stature because we're not talking about him. No, so. um, yeah, it's bad. It's bad in <laughs> Dallas right now. Speaking of QBs, um, I talked about Jimmy G already. I'm again, I'm really excited about that out in San Francisco. Uh, maybe that sways my. Do I pick San Francisco this week? They are playing I'm the Bears. On this week. So uh, yesterday we had a little bit of a I'm not gonna say a Twitter fight, but there was a there was a Twitter shove I think a Twitter shove a Twitter shove an uh, at uh, <laughs> a, a, a little at a little at attack uh, between Dustin and I uh, over Brady versus Wentz right now who are you picking for MVP and a lot of analysts are it, from what I've seen are really split on this decision and I think it will clearly come down to the final weeks. But right now, I don't know how you – I get what Wentz is doing right now for Philly. How do you not give it – how do you not give the edge to Brady in a sense? So we were talking about this before we went on air. And I give the edge to Wentz because if we go back to the very beginning of the year mm-hmm. and you have the Eagles starting – you know, you have the Eagles backup quarterback have to lead their team through their season. And you have the Patriots backup quarterback at the time have to lead their way through the season. Who is where? The Eagles are not ten and one. The Eagles are five and six and mired into contention with that division. Five and six and still pr- probably still winning the division. But the Eagles do not look like the. Who's Eagles. their backup? I don't know. Who Mark Sanchez. Y- y- okay. Yes. Yeah, so, if Mark Sanchez has to start the season for the Philadelphia Eagles, what is the Eagles' record, Paul? Uh, may I may I cue up the butt fumble for you? I would love I would love to say five and seven, four and seven. I think four and seven. I just want to. I want to see. I actually want to look up their depth chart right now. So now, I can I ask you where they where the Patriots would be if they're right now nine and two? Where they would be without Nick Tom Foles Brady? Foles is his backup. Nick Foles. Actually, that's um, not bad. Um, now, where would be where would the Patriots be if Brian Hoyer is your backup this year? If Brian Hoyer is your backup, and we get Brian Hoyer, who is I don't know. I think Brian. What, Hoyer, look what Brady. Here's the thing with the Philadelphia Eagles. 
they've really had games in hand very early. Okay? Mm-hmm. The Patriots have not. The Patriots have had a lot of come-from-behind wins the beginning of the season. They had to uh, beat the Saints late. Or Saints was, a, Saints was okay. Uh, sorry, the Houston Tech. Uh, not Houston Tech. They lost. Uh, yeah, they beat the Houston Texans late in the game. Brian Hoyer is not making that throw to Brandon Cooks. Brian Hoyer is not making that throw. He's not making that drive. He's, but, not making it, he's not even making it close. But with Bill Belichick's ability to coach I up. Jones, not that I, I quickly. Just, I just, I think if Brian Hoyer, so if Brian, Even if you take Jimmy Garoppolo for that first half of the season, I don't think they win half the games that Brady won. I this year. still think that they're first in the division because the Patriots. No, I think they're, I think they're tied for first with the Bills. The Bills are six and six and five. The Bills. Without Bill, you're telling me that Brady's only, that Brady's worth three wins this year? I don't think so at all. I think that... I think Brady's worth ha- at least five or six of those wins right now. I don't know. It depends I would say on six. Really, That'd be more it, on it the depends six because wins. The way I look at this is that if, they, if both teams start the year with their backup quarterbacks that were originally on the roster, the Patriots are still in first place of the division. I don't see I that. don't think Nick Foles I don't think Jimmy has, Garoppolo's has worth he, three, three wins. I don't think he's worth to make... I think he is. Win. I think he is. I think he is worth three wins in the sense of Bill Belichick comes up with different game plans in that sense. Bill Belichick... Actually, you could say two... two you could say one or two wins because if... That, that's like saying Jimmy Garoppolo is only is just as good as Tom Brady, if not one less win more. I think he's two wins. That doesn't make any... And that doesn't, doesn't make any sense. How can you say that Jimmy Garoppolo is just as good as Brady? I'm not saying he's just as good as Brady. I'm just saying they're that not winning the division. The drop off because we're talking about value. You're saying instead of going, you're saying the Pats would either be seven and four, eight and three, or nine and two with Jimmy Garoppolo. I think they'd be seven and four oh, with Jimmy I Garoppolo. Think so. I, think I think they you're would. It for seven and I four. think they would be seven and four in that division with that schedule with the quarterbacks that they have faced so far. You know, I think, and I want to look up the New, New England Patriots schedule here just so I know exactly because you, I, I look at them. Who have they played so far this year? Okay, so we go back to, be, to the beginning of the year. The Chiefs. Okay, they which lose had that a, game. Which had Brady. a great defense that game. Saints. I still think they which win that a, game. Which has has secretly become a great defense. They've had a great defense all year. I still think they win Houston that Saints had game. Had a good defense that time. You know, you got Houston. You got. You had to Patriots. face. You had to face the, the likes of Luke Keekley for for the for the um, then, for the but, Panthers. But then you got the Buccaneers, so they won that game of Garoppolo. They right, won and they that barely game won that game. They scored what seventeen points that game. It was Thursday night football. I don't I care. Really, I don't. I don't care. Seventeen points. Go on. And you get the Patriots, the Falcons, the Chargers. The Patriots. How did they? Pay I mean, for? the Fal- You get the Falcons, Chargers, Jets. Yeah, Chargers Broncos, have one of the best defenses in the Raiders, league. Raiders. Jets always get a hard game. Raiders have a good defense. I think they can be seven and four no with way. Jimmy Garoppolo. The only game that I see on this schedule that I think, I think you're forgetting what Brady did in the fourth quarter for those early games. I think, I think the you're really looking only past that. Game that, they if that. If they flip-flop those games, you're looking at an 0 and 4 Patriots team I going you, into right. Thursday night football against the You look at against the, you look um, at a 2 and 2 Buccaneers. team right now going into Thursday night football. I think if Brady is if Brady is out for Garoppolo, the Texans win that game. They go 1 and 3. I still and, think, and I, then I think everyone's putting fire, it's oil on the fire. They, they're saying it's over. There's not, we're not no, gonna be because no, that. it's just I just look at the rest of their schedule and I look at who they've played and I say, I think, you know, you look at I want to see who Carson Wentz has played, but you right, know, now go to Philly. Yeah, go to Philly. Well, here's just some stat comparison because you know that's what I'm all about. Is Brady has a 68 uh, completion rating over a 60 from Wentz. He's thrown 700 more yards than Wentz. He's thrown two less touchdowns than Wentz, but he's also thrown two less interceptions. He has a better QB rating by about seven points. And they've also been sacked the same amount of times, which is saying a lot for someone like Brady, considering how much he was touched the first four games of the season, where we're going, he's not going to last. I mean, I looked so at... So on, the, on, the, on that comparison, I go, you know what? I'm going to give it to Brady because, one, he has the edge in a lot of different, different stats. And we've talked about that before. If you have better stats, then you should be considered the MVP. Well, I think when we're talking about... We're talking about the MVP of a team. We're talking about the MVP of the league. And right now what Brady is doing is ridiculous. All right, and and let's take it a step back here. Brady is obviously the AFC MVP. Wentz is obviously the MVP. And, like, we are debating your two MVP candidates. One of these guys, like, if Brady wins, I'm not going to be like, oh, Brady didn't deserve it. If Wentz wins, I don't think Brady fans are going to be like, Wentz didn't deserve it. Um... So you look at who Wentz has played. Wentz has played the Redskins, the Chiefs, the Giants, the Chargers, the Cardinals, the Panthers, uh, the Skins again, the 49ers, the Broncos, the Cowboys, and I wish the Bears. That was the Pats got to play the, the 49ers. That'd be fun. But you look at yeah, a lot Bears, of games. That's you great. Know, that's, that's a lot of fun. That's awesome. Eagles beat the Bears by 28. Beat the Cowboys by yeah, a team that's tank, 27. A team that's terrible right now. Go ahead. Keep beat going. The what, are, what are the bad teams that they play? Oh, the Broncos? Awesome. 
the 49ers by 23. Oh, they play the 49ers. Cool. Carson Wentz is bringing his team out, and they are blowing They're blowing out. bad teams out, Dustin. The Pats actually had to play some competition this year. It's going to be interesting to see how the end of the year goes because this week the Eagles have the Seahawks. So I think Wentz gets MVP because if you slot Nick Foles into that spot, I think they look a lot different. I don't think they're winning these games as much. I don't think they're blowing out these opponents. I think games against like the Giants – I think the Giants have a chance to win that game. I think the Chargers win the game. I think, you know, the Redskins in week one are going against Nick Foles. I think the Redskins have a chance to win that game. I think it's a totally different tune for the Eagles, and I think the Eagles might be 6-5 and five right now if it wasn't for the fact that Wentz is making great throws, he's being efficient, he's not turning the ball over, he's doing a great job overall. Um, but... I don't know. I think it depends on what are, you, what are you saying? Are you looking at stats for value or are you looking at meaning to the team? I think you have to do both, but I'm saying that right now if we're, we've, we've always had this debate. We always bounce back and forth. Is yeah. it meaning for the team or is it for the stats? If you're talking meaning for the team, I still think it's Brady. If you're talking stats, I still think it's Brady. He has two less touchdowns. I think if you're talking two. meaning that's to it. the team. That's it. That's the only, thing, he has, the only most... thing he's not leading Wentz in right now is, is two less touchdowns. Two less touchdowns. Two less, and 700 more yards. He's throwing the crap out of the ball this year. I mean, he's got five more, what, five more games? He's only seven, uh, almost 1,600 yards away from a 5,000 uh, season. That's fantastic. And at 40 years old, we have to keep remembering this. It's got that, it's got that magic I understand water. that Wentz is, what, he's a 24, 25 right now, but, yeah. like, Brady's tw- he's 40 years old. He's, no quarterback should be doing this. <laughs> Brett Favre. <laughs> Brett Favre, stop Brett Favre, it. Brett Favre, Brett Favre, come on. He will have the Vikings to the NFC title game when he was, like, 50. Um... No, I think, I think, once if I am a voter, I look at the teams, I look at the coaches, I look at the schedules, and I give Wentz the MVP. No way. Because not, I think not Bel- when you're talking I think, schedule. I think Belichick can coach a backup quarterback up to still get. I don't his team think that quickly. Four. I don't think that quickly. I don't think this is this isn't. I know the defense is doing a lot better right now, but I don't think it's a team that they can rely on the defense. It really is a team they have to. They they need Tom Brady to be in there. It, it, without him, this team is it, they're se- second in the division easily, easily, in so, my opinion. If the Eagles go Cooper for- Rush, by the way, is the backup quarterback for uh, uh, the Dallas Cowboys. That comes from my brother. Who? Cooper Rush. I, I ask again, who? I, I said I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, I like. Um, so, what is the Patriots' record right now? What are they? They're nine and two. So, against the ten and one Eagles. If the Patriots go twelve and four. And the Eagles go fourteen and two. Do you still give Brady the edge? Let's say they no, and that's what I was saying is that I I don't. This he has to continue to excel statistically. Now it's one of those things where do I blame the Super Bowls on him? Not at all because he was off the field with the lead when they won those when they lost those Mm -hmm. games. Now with the the rest of the year though, if he goes fourteen and was it was it four? uh, You said thirteen. 12 and 12 and 12 four. and 4. 12 and 4. I don't know what their remaining games are on the schedule. I know well it's most of it's AFC. So honestly, I think they'll lose one more game. And I think it's going to be against Pittsburgh. I, I that Pittsburgh game, the Pittsburgh team scares me because that offense is so good against the Patriots defense that has progressively gotten better and statistically one of the best in the I league. I think they lose one more game, but I think but, I don't think it's the game you think it is. Um and we'll get to that later in our picks. Um <laughs> Oh, so is it going to be this week? I think this is. I Ooh. think I think we are in for the classic. So I just well, here's and here's something else I want to say about Brady is why I would give him the MVP is he's consistently doing this year in and year out. He was three years ago. You get into the you get into the LeBron two James years ago, discussion at that. Point. Two years ago, he was he was uh, second place to Cam Newton. Now I know that Cam Newton also got 48 out of 50 votes, but he did get a vote, so he came in second. Last year, he came in second to Matt Ryan. This year, he's predicted, again, to become second to Kamar Swift. He doesn't go away. He's consistently doing this year in and year out. He's putting up ridiculous stats. The older he gets. It's the LeBron James conversation in the sense of. Other than 2017, 2007, this is one of his statistically greatest years he's had. No, it's the same. It's the same thing that happens with LeBron every year in MVP voting because he's always going to be in the top five because he's he's such a great player. The best player in the world. You are used to it. Like, you are used to seeing him put up these amazing stats. And it's the same thing with Brady at this point. You look at Brady's stat line and be like, I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked he's in the top five for old stat because he's, he's that good. Um, and Top three. Top three. Top three. Um, right now, top two. Right now, most of, like I said, most of them, other than touchdowns. Other than touchdowns. He leads, all quarter, he leads the quarterback race between him and Wentz. 
I do. I'm not going to fault him on two touchdowns. <laughs> I'm not. Like, that's silly. I, I mean, think that's I silly to do. I can't say you're two touchdowns. You, you're wrong because yeah. you have Oh, you two have two less touchdowns? Okay. No, you're not the MVP. Like, you know, if he had ten less touchdowns, I don't think it's close. But he's caught up every week. He's caught up a little bit each week. And I think He's making a case for him to be the MVP other than Wentz. And I think, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how the season's end. I want to see what their records like are. I, said, the I agree, I because I don't, the if, the, if the Patriots have this in hand, in the next, I think if they beat Buffalo and they win next week, they'll clinch their the division. And I think almost the same thing with the Eagles as well. If they win another game, they'll clinch their division. So I see them being able to take some time off for both of them. Um, but the, the, especially for Brady, I could see that happening towards the, like the last game of the season. For Wentz, I'm not sure. He's young. He wants to go out there every week and, and, and battle. I'm not saying Brady doesn't, but... I feel like he'll just add to his – he'll pad those stats by being able to do that. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I, 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 my vote is for Brady. I get that I'm a little – And my um, vote is for Wentz. I need to get that I'm a little unbiased here, but whatever. Or whatever, biased here, but whatever. All right, um, moving on. Yeah, let's go to home field advantage. Um, for myself, uh, I don't have any crazy news to do, but I did just get the last um, – uh, basketball and hockey schedules uh, via our coaches and athletic directors. So I'll be putting together our uh, shooting schedule for uh, the winter sports season. So you can stay tuned to Northwest Access TV throughout the winter. We'll have basketball and hockey from BFA and uh, MVU. We'll have basketball from Richford and Enosburg as well. Um, so stay tuned on, again on Northwest Access TV throughout the year. We'll also be live. Uh, our goal this year is to have a game of the week every week. Um, that we'll go live from, so all the different schools and area uh, places around Franklin County, so we're really excited to do that. Dustin will be on the mic for us. I believe Bryce will be on the mic for us. You get more um, chances to just hear my to hear voice. hear you just I talk am, about sports. This is what, my third or fourth year on the road doing Something the winter like sports? That. Like, it is just all me And we're talking. getting better and better every year. We're, we're no longer having to power rank uh, canned soups because the teams, I remember that. the teams are getting better, um, which, is, <laughs> which is a lot more fun. We have, we have less dead air. Um, my home field advantage, and you know, I don't really want to say it's my home field advantage because it's I State and the general. You know, this would be Bryce's if he was here. UVM received some votes to be ranked in the top twenty-five. I think they beat one Richmond or two, last night, and they beat Richmond. UVM is six and one at this point. Um, they're doing really good, and I was thinking to myself today, if UVM goes to their conference schedule, doesn't lose the conference schedule, or loses one game does well for the rest of their out-of-conference schedule, but loses their conference tournament, do they have a chance to get an at-large bid? If they're receiving top 25 votes, um, you know, if they're receiving top 25 You're votes... You're saying without well, having to win... Without having to win the American East, do they have a chance of getting in? That's my question to you. What do you think they would have to do to get in that large? It's so, it's so weird to talk about a, a school like UVM because they are technically a small school when it comes to um, Division One. But I really... If you had said that there's, you said there was some talk about them getting twenty five. One, I think they got one or two votes. I think that's enough, honestly. I, I think that's enough to say this team could, if they continue on the success that they are. And you look at their they schedule. Could get, they, they could get that fifteen or sixteen at large at large bid without having to win. You know, look, and you look at who they play. They play Bucknell, they play Marquette, they play Northeastern, they play Sienna. Yeah, they, they lost play by a few to Kentucky, too, and that's like, a top five team. This is a, a team, team that, you know, for the rest of their out-of-conference schedule, let's say they only lose to Marquette, you know, they'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. So they could be 12-2 and two going into, into conference, conference play. play. And we've been talking about how they might, not win, they might not lose a game in conference play. And, you know, you can see this team, you know, after the, end, you know, the tournament have 28, 29 wins – and maybe not win the American East because they could get upset. You know, you're at classic Albany sure. or Stony Brook upset, who I think would be deserving of one of those first four seeds as the at-large. Um, this team has been really good this year, and it's going to be very interesting. To see, you know, they beat Yale. You know, they'll, they'll have Harvard on their schedule. They have a chance to beat some teams that are most likely will be pu- pushing for the tournament on their way to um, on our way to March. Um, Richmond isn't good this year. They're one in six, but. They're still an A-10 opponent. Sure. And Richmond, you know, they the next game is against Bucknell, who is – I don't know what Bucknell's record is at this point. Let me look. Um, Bucknell is 3-4. and four. They just beat Stony Brook the other night. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. It's great that UVM – I think it's fantastic for the school, and it really helps um, it, when, when they're developing this new arena and this new facility – 
Um, I think it really helps the booster in that in that sense where it's like, oh look, the team's doing really well. We might get some. We might actually be ranked once for the first time in what forever. First time that a UVM team would be the women were ranked for a couple of weeks, right. five or six years ago during the uh, Pillow Pipes. Old era. men's team. So I mean, but you're talking about like things are really starting to go well for UVM as a program. If so, I'm UVM's athletic director, I'm looking around and saying, you know, if you're UVM's program. athletic director, you should have locked up John Becker a long time ago for for dozens of years. Here I'm also looking. This is a guy that could really say, like, "Ooh, you know what? Uh, look what my team is doing, and I'm going to get paid." So I'm also trying to pitch myself to bigger conferences at this point. If I'm uh, John Becker, right? Because, but I'm saying on the side of the UV, uh, on, on the, the no, UVM side, Becker, you should have locked you should have locked him up a long time ago. Oh yeah, and you know he wants to stay in UVM, and I think the facilities he says will help. He does, but when that paycheck comes rolling in. I don't know. I've seen plenty of coaches take other jobs. It really depends, though, because if Vermont gets a brand new facility and can possibly bump themselves up to a bigger conference, I don't know. He might stay around. He, he strikes me as one of those coaches that isn't going to take the first offer to go to your big school program, but would take an offer to go like to an A10 program or to you know a Mountain West program. Well, you know, one of those, you know, because in college basketball you got your power conferences, you got your mid power conferences. That's why I put the A10. You got your mid majors, and this is where the American East is, right about here. Right? I, 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 if someone's going to pay them, they're going to do it. I mean, it's same the same thing. You you go to you, what is it? You go to a restaurant. If you pay the restaurant enough money, they're going to go and get and get you McDonald's. Like that's just how that's. And, and I think, it, and it's also though, if UVM could get into one of these bigger conferences and get some more conference, get some more TV money coming in, because that's where it is right now in sports. It's the TV money coming in for basketball. If UVM can get out of the American East, as much as I like, you know. Love the American East, but it's never going to get a good TV contract. They're never going to have more than one or two teams. You know, this will be probably the one chance that UVM, you know, if UVM gets ranked, has an amazing season, and loses in the conference final. This will be the one time the eight, uh, American East get two teams in. Um, they're never going to get in that large, but unless if it's a team like UVM that has had two or three years of success in a row mm -hmm. to the point where they're receiving top 25 votes. So... I, don't know, I think the new facilities are great for UVM. I think getting votes are, you know. Do you know what the completion date on those? Or is this just are we still in the very early? I think stages? we're still in the very early stages. I don't know what the completion date is, um, but I'm looking at what UVM's got for an out of conference schedule. I'm looking at their conference schedule, and I'm saying, hey, you know, they they play Dartmouth too. They play some other. You know, I think they got a chance to make a good push to get the to have a resume that you can at least say as an at large, like okay. They should be one of the last ones in if they don't win their conference tournament. Um, I think if anything, they'd be a fun team to have in. It's one of those things where you can, um, you can. There's just a lot of hype around them right now. So even if they're not as great towards the end of the season, if you're in the tournament, they're going to make it at least interesting. So I feel like that's still a team that you they can, can knock somebody to. off. And I'm and sure there's a dozen other teams that would be the exact same way in other conferences. We're not talking about it because we're not in those those regions, but. Um, I think they're a team right now that's just a lot of fun to watch, especially some of the players that they have. So Yeah, but that's my thoughts on UVM. That's my hometown advantage for this week. Sounds good. Let's go to our NFL picks because we wanted to kind of break this down. We always seem to run out of time when we're talking about our NFL picks. Um, but this week we have about, you know, a good portion of the show to talk about. two of us, and so we, can we break yell it, as much. Right, um, and we can break it down uh, to talk a little more about, uh, you know, in-depthly about uh, all the games. So... Let's talk about last week right now, just real quick. So we had, um, I went 13-3. and three. I had a bad week. Bryce went 14-2, and two, uh, which is ridiculous to me. Uh, I'm going to go 6-10. and <laughs> the, the closeted uh, football fan. Uh, you went 10-6. and six. I went 10-6 yeah, last week. And then week? John went 11-5. and five. Wow. Uh, even Nick Mumley, uh, with our special guest uh, pickings, went 12-4 uh, and four on the season, on the, uh, on the night. So, I thought I had an awful week last week, actually. Um, I, I mean, if, if you didn't take your hometown Houston Texans, you'd be sitting at 11-5. and five. I mean, the Texans almost won that You didn't take the Cleveland game. Browns again like you did last year, you'd be sitting at the same record. I actually believed in the Browns last four. week. How could you... No. I thought they were going to win. I thought, no. they, I thought they had a chance. No, you didn't. And you were the only one that thought that. 
Uh, you almost screwed up and picked the Bears as well. So I would just like to point that oh. out. So you had that down. Then you picked the Giants last week. I mean, there are a lot of teams you picked that you just shouldn't have, and then you'd be sitting high and pretty. I went for a bold uh, week last week. John is out. catching up. I would like to say that. Uh, you're at 105 and 71. He's at 96 and 80. So he's only nine wins behind you. He's coming. All right, so i got to pick winners five, for the rest of the season. He's got five weeks to catch up to you. Only picking winners. Um, um. <laughs> and then I'm sitting a little prettier, uh, seven wins more than you at uh, 112 and 64. Bryce is at a seven. 71% uh, correct uh, because he wasn't the whole year with us. Um, so does that mean we have to give him the O and whatever for those other games? Like we, we mean, didn't do that uh, with John, so I'm just. I think next year there. we make everybody start putting in their picks before. I think I want a whole season done in preseason. Just send me all your picks for the season. Before regardless, th- regard, see how well you do. Because you don't know how the teams are going to do. That'd be interesting. Um, so we have Thursday Night Football. If you're watching, Color us, rush. If you're watching us tomorrow, you can <laughs> laugh at how bad we got this one wrong. We have Washington Redskins at the Dallas Cowboys. And you have, again, the, the mess that is the Dallas Cowboys. You have what should be a top five wide receiver on your team that can't get the ball. I get to take the Washington R words on this one, Paul, because the Cowboys Washington offense R-words. has been so awful. Like, they can't put up more than eight points. And... You know, I look at both teams, and yes, the the skins are not great. They're four and five, but the skins have been a team that they play they play up to good teams and down to bad teams. Um, almost lost to the Giants last week, but almost beat the Saints a couple weeks ago. Right. So I think Kirk Cousins has himself a good game. Uh, you know, skins get back into the hunt. They are they are only a couple games out. Um, for that wild card spot still. Um, I don't think any team in the NFC East has a chance at a wild card spot. They have to practically win out. They're five and six. So is Dallas. So, I mean, it's a it's a race for second place in the NFC East, which means nothing because I think most of your teams out of the wild card are probably going to come out of the South with you have um, – we have the, the Saints at 8-3, and three, Carolina at 8-3, and three, and Atlanta at 7-4. and four. You're – Two wild card teams. You might have three teams from the NFC this is South. A, this, this is division, a must-win game, game, game if you are going to have any hope of getting that wild card. If you are the Skins, because the fact of the matter is, is that um, Saints. What Saints Panthers play each other this weekend? Well, one of the two plays. You know, I could. I still don't trust. Yeah, them. this is a divisional. This is a divisional weekend. This is a really good weekend, still, and it's also a really bad weekend. I still we'll get into that. don't trust the Falcons to finish. With we'll more get than to 10 Washington points. Redskins. You went with you so, going. You're yeah. going with Washington. I want the Skins because Kirk Cousins is the better quarterback. Um, I think they put up more points. Yeah, I'm the same way. Now, why isn't the Red, why aren't the Redskins taking the same approach as the Giants and sitting Kirk Cousins, playing a backup? Because you're not gonna. Are you really gonna hold on to Kirk Cousins for the next year? Are you gonna be able to pay him enough money? I mean that's just that's pretty much what the Giants are doing. We're not gonna we're we're pretty much admitting right now we're not taking you think, on next uh, well, year. I think the, I think the Skins have to pay Kirk Cousins. If they don't pay Kirk Cousins, it's just a stupid move. Kirk Cousins is. Cousins has proven he is worth. Was the he money. franchised this year? His franchise tag making for the like second year in a row. Like Twenty something million. He can't and they can't do it again this year. Well, they can, but it would be like forty million dollars for your quarterback. <laughs> um, it would be out. You can keep franchise tag. It just you know one year you'll pay a hundred million dollars for a quarterback. Um. I don't understand why Washington refuses to pay Cousins. He's been good. He's worth it. He's a leader of that team. And he's young. He's young. Lock him down. Lock him down. Um, but no, I will take the skins in this game. Better quarterback. Better roster. They pull up the color rush win. I'm jumping into our uh, our picks here. Uh, we had uh, Dallas is what John is going with. He's going with the, the Cowboys. And then Bryce went with... Uh, the Redskins. The thing about this game, what's really funny about this game, it's a Thursday night game, but it won't feel like a Thursday night game. Both of these teams played on they Thanksgiving. They had a rest. A rest they had a whole week. So they had a whole is, week to rest. A, this is going to be the best Thursday, one of the better Thursday night it games should of the be, year. It should be one of the most well-rested Thursday. I think we had a better Thursday night game uh, a couple weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken. Was it Tennessee? No, it wasn't Tennessee and Pittsburgh. Um, it was a couple weeks ago I thought we had it. a few good a ones this year, but this will be one of the better ones because both teams are coming off normal rest. Right, um, exactly. Okay, so Minnesota at Atlanta. This is, again, we're getting into some, some games here that are really good games, but there are the, the but do we really care about the outcome, depending on what teams are actually playing here? I don't trust the Falcons. The Falcons almost blew a lead against the Buccaneers last week. The Vikings have more rest. Um, I'm taking I'm taking Case Keenum. I'm riding the Vikes train. Um, Finally on the Case Keenum train. Huh? I, I, have I, I have convinced you. Have I convinced you otherwise that this guy, who I think I said before the show, has better stats than Carson than Carson your your MVP vote in Carson Wentz. I have gone back and I watched how Stone bad Jeff be- how bad of a coach Jeff Fisher is. 
and I don't think Case Keenum is a bad quarterback. I don't think he's a top ten quarterback. I don't think I think he's a good mid level quarterback. But I take I take that Vikings defense. You know, Xavier Rhodes is going to shut down Julio Jones this weekend, and I take the Vikings to win this game on the road. I don't trust Atlanta still, and this is why, and this is why it's really important for a team like the Redskins to play out this weekend. You know, because. If the Redskins win, they'll be six and six. If the Falcons lose, they'll be seven and five. They are one game out of that wild card spot, so it's still possible to get the get, get a wild card spot. It's not the end of the world. Case um, Keenum, same amount of interceptions as Carson Wentz, better completion rating, and I believe if I have it here, oh right, a hundred less, uh, two hundred less yards in passing. No, I like Carson Keenum. Wentz is your MVP still. I'm taking Keenum. I'm taking Keenum this week. If, if we're debating week. the whole, what does a player mean to your team? Well, let's right be, now, Case Keenum let's might be that player. That one at the end of the Maybe year. Maybe it's Case um, Keenum next game. So uh, I'm going to go with Minnesota as well. I've been on that Case Keenum bandwagon for a long, long time. Um, let's go to Detroit versus Baltimore. Baltimore. Oh, I should say, sorry, Minnesota uh, for... Um, Minnesota. Bryce is taking Atlanta, and John is taking Minnesota. Go on. I'm taking the uh, Lions this week. Flacco is just so elite. So, so elite. Oh, my God, he was bad. Tom Savage, if Tom Savage has one less fumble on Monday... He had outplayed Joe Flacco. That's how bad. Nobody. I really think we have to get past the whole elite joke with, with Joe Flacco, Joe Flacco because it's been dead for years. It's been dead, but he's a bad quarterback. Like Joe Flacco, should not be a starting quarterback. So again, I like year. to say, Eli Manning, plenty of places for you to go. I man. would think the Ravens would be a good but, option. However, but the Ravens have a big contract in Joe Flacco that they're paying. They out. They should never have paid him. I know he won a he Super just Bowl. Just won a Super Bowl. I, That's just, what you do got, with someone that lucky. wins a Super Bowl. You give them money. But I, I just, he's been terrible. He's awful. Can you imagine the outlash that the Baltimore Ravens would have had, the fan, fandom, if they didn't pay Flacco after winning the Super Bowl? Well, the outlash they're going to have if he's their starting quarterback next year is going to be <laughs> pretty pretty bad. Now, I take the Lions. The Lions are still right in the hunt, too. Another team that has a lot to play for in the sense of they are 6-5. and five. If they win this weekend and the Falcons lose, they are right back into that second wildcard spot. So, Lions got to come out and play well. Um I think they have more rest than the Ravens. I think we've yet to see the best of Marvin Jones, and I'm really excited. Marvin Jones. Um, uh, yeah, Martin Jones Jr. Marvin Jones Jr. I'm, yeah. I think we've yet to see the best of him, and I'm so excited to see this guy continue to, to, to excel. He, he was someone that came out a couple years ago and said, I want to be the next Calvin Johnson. No, and the Lions have been decent. They, they almost came back against the um, Vikings. And the Lions have... A week and right, a they half gave the, rest. They gave the Vikings a, a fight, and that's your 9-2 and two Vikings. And the, and the Lions have a lot more rest than the Ravens right now. Ravens played on Monday night. Lions played last Thursday. Lions are going to be healthy. No, they, didn't play mon- oh, they played on Monday night. Oh, yeah, on Sunday. Yeah, so they, they're, they're a little bit of a short week. Short week and for the Ravens, Detroit's long like week, week for... It's like a bye week almost. Pretty them. much. So I take the Lions in this one. Yeah. Um, so we have... Uh, and that was a clean sweep. We all picked Detroit to win that game. Next one is New England at Buffalo. This is... Stop it. This is the Buffalo... Is this, this a trap game? In Buffalo? This is the Buffalo wins this game this week, and in three weeks, the Bills lose by like 50 to the Patriots game right here. This is it. Tyrod Taylor is mad. Tyrod Taylor is trying to get to the playoffs. Tyrod Taylor hates Tyrod front Taylor office. has to face, as since week five, the third best defense in the National Football League. This is just the game that everybody picks the Patriots, and the Bills somehow win, and, they, and then Tom Brady gets mad and goes wins the Super Bowl <laughs> because he's so angry that the Bills beat him. Um, that's that game for me. I'm taking the Bills. I think I'm, that's the one thing that's missing from Tom Brady so far this year is that they lost their two games very early. He hasn't season. had that he hasn't he had has, that pissed off game yet. And I think it's coming. I think the Bills pull off the upset. Then everybody's gonna be like, the remember Bills. how last week where I said there's some picks you shouldn't have picked because uh, it's putting you deeper and deeper in the this hole. This is my one upset. Having John this is my catch up to you. One ups- this, upset. This is this is that game, Dustin. This is this, this is, is that game. I don't, don't even think about it. this this team other than Lashawn McCoy. There is nothing good coming out of the Buffalo Bills right now. Absolutely oh, no. nothing. Buffalo they Bills got their wins chance. very early in the season. I don't know what are they on. They a, beat Kansas last week. And they beat Kansas City. Right. They beat a Kansas City team where we went, uh, I thought this Kansas City team was supposed to win the Super Bowl yeah, after Bills. blowing out the it. Patriots on, on the first game of the season. And then what have they done since then? I'm locking it in. Go Bills. Oh, I don't see No it. one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. But no, I think the Patriots will lose one more game this year, and it will be this game. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be this game. I would, I honestly, I, I, I'm curious to see which game. I agree with you. There's going to be one more game the Pats are going to lose. I think they'll go into the league 13 and three. But I don't know what game it's going to be. I, I do not one. think it's going to be this one. I think the Pats are a little more prepared for it than the Bills are. Um, San Francisco at the Chicago Bears. This is like crap versus crap, but. 
there is some upside, and we talked about this a little early in the, in the, in the, in the show. Jimmy Garoppolo will be starting for the 49ers. So do you just throw caution to the wind and say, you know what? He's the new quarterback of the future. Clearly they're going to win this game. Or do you say the Bears are a little more, while they're not the best team, they're a little more established on the season, they can still put together a decent fight against the 49ers. John Fox is an awful coach. John Fox will be out of the league after this year. Chicago Bears, 3-8 and eight on um, the season. 49ers, 1-10. I am taking the 49ers. The Bears are on a four-game losing streak. I will take the 49ers this week. I like Jimmy Garoppolo, and I think Trubisky, as much as I like him, he's very in danger of becoming a bust if the Bears don't hire an offensive-minded coach this offseason. I don't, um, I don't think you can call him a bust. I can say that he just wasn't utilized to his full potential. I think he reminds me of Jared Goff last year where he's yeah, under a but coach. but now look at Jared Goff this year. He's under a coach that's so bad that he's looking a lot off. Now look at Jared Goff this year. Uh, the Bears have to make the right hire in the offseason. I agree. But I think the 49ers move won. cities. Uh, yeah, move cities. <laughs> The Los Angeles Bears. Yeah. No, let's just go to the uh, – the, are they on the south side of Chicago? Maybe they just go to the north side. The north side Bears. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to go with – I'm going for San Francisco as well. I, I, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. I like the Garoppolo. Um, I liked what we saw in three plays of Jimmy Garoppolo last week. I think there's just so much upside that he's been taking but team reps. This is one of those football games where you gotta you got to really love football if you're going to sit down and watch this one. And that's a cl- another, another clean sweep uh, – of the, those teams uh, for us. Uh, Tampa Bay at Green Bay Packers. Again, crap first crap. But Jamison Winston is going to be back this week. He's He's been ruled a starter. He's back from his shoulder injury. I don't know. I like the Packers. Um, they looked, they came out against the Buccaneers Steelers. are heading up to Green Bay. I don't know. Maybe you can look up the weather report for Green Bay. But I, I think it's going to be know, a little I'm, cold for Mr. Jamison Winston. I'm up in, taking up in the Lambeau. Packers because, you know, they came out against the Steelers last week, a game where they were... Packers, predicted to lose by two five touchdowns. Five and six, Tampa four and seven. Again, it's not it's not any better on. on I either. I'll take the Packers. Um, Hundley looked okay last week. It looks like McCarthy's got an offense that's going to work. You know, they won't beat anybody good, but I think they'll beat the bad teams they should beat. This is a Buccaneers team that is bad. They will lose to the Packers. <laughs> I'm, I, I, feel I mean, like, I can't take anybody in this. Team. Uh, yeah, I'm I feel a home like, team. Yeah, like I feel like. That that makes sense. Like this is one of those. And like, also, the the Packers did come out and give us it's Steelers the coin flip run game. For their money. Too. It's that coin flip game. Okay, what do we do? Uh, yeah, we'll go with the home team. And that's kind of been my bread and butter. Anyway, this year is if I'm real little, little stumped, I go with the home team. And I don't. I should look back and see uh, how many I've gotten right. I, mean, over I think those. the Packers played okay last week. They're playing better football than the Buccaneers right now. Um, that that yeah. that team you said wouldn't win the division is currently tied for first in the division at seven and four. The Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Indianapolis I mean, Colts, I and I would like to point out that right now Houston is in third place, which is where John, John said they would be at the beginning of the season. And four of Houston's best players are out. So, no, like, Dustin, injuries are part of the game. Injuries, are, and, for, and and they're still playing competitively too. Yeah, like, but they're not in first place. Yeah, I know they're not in first place. But Technically, half team, they're in second. When half your team dies, um, pff, now I'm taking the Jaguars this week. Um, look, Jaguars are going to win this division by attrition. Um, by attrition. <laughs> by attrition, in the sense of they'll go ten and five, or you know they'll go ten and six, or eleven and five. Um, t- t- bad year for the Colts, no Andrew Luck. Bad year for the Texans, no JJ Watt, no Mercy. You know, like. And I just, t- do you feel bad for Jacoby Brissett lately? Because I, I feel do. like I feel like I'm seeing just highlights of him getting smashed every Brissette single week. Brissett has just tried. Brissett has the. Brissett hasn't been that bad. Brissett's probably been the second best quarterback in this division behind Mariota. Um, if you if you're looking at it from a pure, just a tape and stats mm. perspective, but you know, a Jaguar is going to win this division. They remind me a lot of the Brian Hoyer Houston Texans a couple years ago, where great defense, stars on defense, sacking the quarterback, you know, drags their offense to to the postseason, gets crushed that first game. Mm. Um, you know, you saw it against you know the Arizona Cardinals last week. The minute the Jaguars face good quarterbacks, they're gonna they're gonna be toast. Good um, quarterbacks at the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, Who's their good? Blaine Gabbert. What, Dustin? <laughs> Blaine Gabbert's a good quarterback. No, he's not. What? Well, but you just said he was a good quarterback. But like the minute the Jaguars Mark it down, Blaine Gabbert's a good quarterback. Like you see, so 11-30-2017, Dustin Tanner. The ch- eleven thirty. Yeah. Oh, it's the thirtieth day of November. Oh boy. Um, I thought you were talking like um. 
but I think the Jaguars make the playoffs by winning the AFC good South. Quarterback. They face a good a, quarterback. They face a hot team. I don't even care what you're saying right now. You called Blake Bo- oh, no, um, Blaine Gabbert. Blaine Gabbert, a good quarterback. That, that was just because he beat the Jaguars. Crap versus crap um, again. Denver versus Miami. Uh, yeah, no yuck. kidding. Uh, oh, God. I don't, can I pick a tie? Yeah, you could. I wouldn't. <laughs> Actually, that'd be funny if you did. So if I if, pick a tie. I'll give you two points. But if they don't tie, do you, I lose? Do you, I lose two games? Do I lose the game? You lose technically lose two games because you didn't pick a winner for either for either team. So yeah, you would lose two. I don't think it's smart to pick a tie. Uh, I don't know who's. I don't know who to pick. Both teams suck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just the dolphin. The dolphins um, can't score points, but the Broncos can't stop anybody. Right. Movable force meets stoppable object. Go dolphins. Go dolphins. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a clean sleep as well. Carolina versus the Saints. Again, we're getting to a little bit of the games that are oh, they're a little more fun now. Uh, Carolina versus the Saints is a. Uh, Win for they're going for, sorry they're both in yeah Saints they're both eight and three so this is battle for first place. Ah oh, man, this is going to be a good game. The Saints, Saints offense just kind of stalled out last week, um, but the Panthers defense has been playing some good ball. I'm going to take Cam Newton. I'm going to ride my Cam Newton upset here. Yeah, you and John are both on the Carolina. Uh, fandom there. I'm. I'm. Nobody going... can stop McCaffrey right now. Yeah, you know, but I'm. Know, I'm a big Drew Brees fan. I've been all year. I think that what he. What he. He should have. Um, there are so many games this year that they. They like. I shouldn't say so many games, but the games that they even lost. Like he's still doing well. This is so gonna be a this shoot, is a great. It's gonna be a shootout. This is great. Like, no, I think it's gonna be a big run game. You're gonna have McCaffrey versus Kamara. This is battle of the rookies and running back. This is gonna be fun. I think it's gonna be a 42 game. A lot of fun. Game. I think it's gonna be a lot of running touchdowns, but I think there'll be some big run plays broken. And, and also add into there as well. Um, Cam Newton running as well. So. I like the Panthers in this one. Uh, Kansas City at the Jets. The Chiefs. Chiefs. The Chiefs. Yeah, I feel like this is a funk. This is like okay, you had your your stint against the Giants. Yeah, you didn't you didn't you didn't win. Okay, you had last week against the was it the Bills last week? You didn't win. Okay, are you, did you win? No, the no, um, Bills won. Right, they didn't win that. Okay, now okay, here's your third chance. This is your third chance, Kansas City. The Jets. You're have in been- first place in the division. Get out of your funk. And get start playing again. So I think this is the, this is that. You game. know what sucks about this game is that the Jets could have a better record right now, but they are just jetsing so hard. Um, like you know, you know, you look at a team and you're like, oh yeah, the Jets are gonna Jets. Yeah. Like they could have won against Carolina last week, but McLeod threw a couple of picks and then they made bad. You know, it's they McCown. had like, McCown. There's no L. I like that's the joke. Go on, McClown. what's your pick? Um, but anyway. I'm taking the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs will get it back together. This Your week. boys, Houston versus the Tennessee, the number one first place Tennessee Titans. I'm riding or dying with my team. Oh my lord! I'm going down to the ship. Go Texans. Uh, I believe that that's a queen sleep. Uh, PB and J on the other side of Tennessee Titans. Cleveland versus the Chargers. So stop it. <laughs> Cleveland won this stop game it. last year. Stop it. They won this game stop last year. Stop it. Look at where the Chargers are right now. But Come they on. won this game last year. But I'm picking the Chargers. Okay, thank you. I like Phil Rivers. <laughs> uh, Rams at the Cardinals. Uh, Rams. Ram- Goff is just, Goff's amazing. L- like LA all over the place. I like Goff. Um, McVay is just a fun, this is a fun football team. Um, but yeah, no, I take, uh, I take Goff and the Rams over the Cardinals, who are starting elite quarterback, Blaine Gabbert. Let's see. Let's see what happens. This will be his true test, right? All right, we're in the two-minute warning, so we'll roll that graphic for you because that's fun, and I can just see myself catching a uh, rod in the home run. So we're going to go to the uh, last three games, Giants versus Oakland. Oakland. Yeah, I think that's everybody here too, right? Oakland, yeah, PBJ and a little bit of vitamin D. <clears throat> Philly and uh, versus Seattle. I'll take the Eagles. Ooh. Oh, the Eagles, okay. Uh, I think everyone else is picking them as well. So I'm just going to split it. As much as I'd love to pick Seattle at home, they they just, they're not the same team at home anymore. Two team, um, Legion of Boom. Without Sherman and Thomas, like, Wentz will be able to tear yeah. them up. Steelers at Bengals. Uh, Steelers. Yeah, I think so as well. Bengals right. are awful. Pit, pit, pit. Have everywhere. we seen the end of Marvin Lewis? No. Have they, they haven't lost the playoff game yet. They haven't won a playoff game yet. Yeah, but they haven't lost one, so he hasn't got his contract extension yet. we got about a minute left. Uh, in, uh, two minute warning. We always like to kind of give a little little uh, prediction for the week ahead. I think we're finally going to see. This is my prediction. One, I'd like to point out that I was correct about Martellus Bennett. He would not end the season with the Patriots. He would be on the IR to um, for the rest of the season. So Packers fans, don't get upset. If anything, they just saved a little bit of money out of your pocket. Um, I really think this is the week for... Jordy Nelson to get finally into that end zone under Brett Huntley. 
That's 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 my. I think, and I'm not saying how many. I'm just saying he's going to get that touchdown finally. That elusive touchdown that seems to have been escaping him all year. Tyrod Taylor goes off for 250 passing yards and 100 rushing yards. And 100 Bills, rushing yards the against Bills the pass. Pull off the upset. Uh, wait, 100 rushing yards. That's my. You want my bold? But it's a bold prediction. 100 yards. 100 rushing yards. And how many passing yards? 250. 250. He how has many touchdowns? a career day. Three touchdowns total. How many interceptions? One. One interception. I like it. That's going to do it for us on Huddle Up. He's Dustin. I'm Paul. We'll be back next week. I'll be back next week. You won't be back next week. I'm in week. Washington next week. You're in Washington. You'll watch the Redskins, maybe? Maybe? No, it's Thursday ticket? and Friday. No, oh, it's okay. It's a bummer. JT will be back, and I'll be back for another episode of Huddle Up here on Northwest Access TV.